And th this is kind of what we believe in terms of uh, what got us to hit to exceed the billion dollar mark. So step number one is uh, just to decide. Uh, and it might, may sound simple, but it's actually a pretty big decision. You know, sometimes when I talk to entrepreneurs, you know, they just want to be their own boss and that's all that matters to them. And that's, that's great uh, if you just want to earn a comfortable living or you're only interested in building, say, a five or $10 million company. Uh, and that's fine too. Uh, but if you're really trying to build a long-term sustainable brand, uh, then, and, and that's the commitment that you made, then there's a lot of trade-offs that you have to make in order to get to that next uh, level of branding or revenue. And really, there, it just requires a lot of patience. Like, you have to walk away from revenue and profit opportunities. And uh, I gave the example where you know, we gave up our 25% of revenue so that we could be true to our long-term vision of being about the very best customer service. But that's the most important thing, and you have to decide that sooner or later. The second thing is to figure out your values and your culture. And I know I used to think that you know, core values was something like that's big corporate, big company stuff. I don't need to worry about it. We don't need to worry about it. You know, if anything, at Zappos, we're anti you know, big corporate culture. So coming up with core values really, at the time, felt like uh, something that there was a lot of questioning, like, is this the right thing to do? But we actually found that once we rolled it out, uh, that it has been, I wish that we had done it sooner. I actually wish that we had done it from day one. And so my advice to all of you is, like, if you don't have those two, really, you should do that sooner rather than later, even if you're only uh, it's one or two people. I actually think the best time is when you're just one or two people. Because when you are one or two people, then you can think about what are your personal core values. And that's actually something I never really have thought about before the Zappos core values. I, I guess I feel kind of lucky in terms, in terms of the Zappos core values happen to come out as pretty closely in line with my own personal core values. But uh, the process we went through was we actually asked all of our employees, you know, what should our core values be at Zappos? And this was actually a year-long process, and we got lots of feedback from our employees, lots of ideas. And our initial list was actually a list of 37 core values, which we thought might be a little hard to memorize. So uh, we combined some of the terms that were just different ways of saying the same thing, and eventually came up with our list of 10. And it wasn't, so it wasn't just a few senior managers out at some retreat saying, oh, what should our core values be? Uh, it was really, it involved the entire company. But, you know, ideally, I wish we could have done that from day one, because when your personal values are in line with your company's values, then you don't have to worry about a lot of the stuff that most companies worry about in terms of what's our brand positioning, or um, you know, for most large companies, if a reporter comes in and wants to do a story, uh, it's usually they're escorted by the PR person, and the PR person walks them around and says, you can. Even though you see all these people here, you can talk to this person, this person, this person, don't talk to anyone else. And uh, because they, only those three people know the company's brand position. Well, we don't have a brand positioning document or statement or anything like that at Zappos, but because we hire for core values and culture, and, and our belief is that culture and brand are the same thing, uh, that it, it just takes care of itself. So when whether it's a prospective job candidate or a reporter comes through, we'll give them a tour of the offices and then we'll say, you know, go, you know, here's where the bathroom is and here's where the kitchen is and, you know, go wander around on your own and just come find me when you're done. We don't care who you talk to. And, and that usually, especially reporters, are very surprised by that. And it's because we believe so strongly in our culture uh, that we're really not afraid of, uh, you know, what employees would say. The other thing is, you know, we when reporters do this, they get, we don't, it's not like employees cite the same uh, message or the same two sentences over and over again. If they talk to three different employees, they'll get three, you know, slightly different versions of what it's like at Zappos or what uh, Zappos, what, what customer service means to them and so on. And, and that's another great thing I think reporters like because they're not just being fed some PR statement over and over again by the same three people. Uh, so I would encourage you to, you know, definitely start uh, thinking about this for your company and for yourself personally. It's uh, a lot harder than you think. It requires a lot of introspection, 
And as I mentioned, for Zappos, it took us a year to come up with that. Uh, step number three is committing to transparency. And uh, I, you know, I gave the example of the reporter walking around our culture book. And uh, some other ways we're transparent is uh, if you go to twitter.zappos.com, that's all our employee tweets. We don't actually tell employees. Most of the stuff is personal. It's not about Zappos. Uh, but our only guidelines for them are just be real and use your best judgment. And we also track all the Zappos mentions in the, in the Twitterverse, uh, the Twitter sphere, uh, at that twitter.zappos.com website. We also have a newsletter called Ask Anything, and it's literally that. Employees can email uh, the Ask Anything email address, and ask anything, they can ask uh, questions about financials, and we'll get the appropriate person to answer that. Or they might ask, uh, what brand, when are we going to carry this brand? Or uh, sometimes they'll ask silly questions like, uh, do uh, vegetarians eat animal crackers? And we'll try to do the research on that as well. Uh, and, and, and publish them in a monthly newsletter. We also have an extranet for our vendors, which uh, uh, basically we work with 1,500 different brands. And each of them can log in and see the exact same information that our own buyers on our merchandising team can see. So they can. Uh, see on-hand inventory, sales, profitability, turn, and so on. And you know, a lot of people are surprised that we're so open with our vendors because they ask us, "Well, aren't you worried that this information is going to get into the hands of competitors?" And you know, tr truthfully, it probably does eventually, or at least some portion of it does. But you know, the flip side of it is, we now have an extra 1,500 pairs of eyes helping us co-manage our business that are not on our payroll. And uh, you know, each buyer has a portfolio of anywhere from 20 to 50 brands. They might miss that one style that's suddenly taking off for that one brand, but we have someone on the brand side, the brand rep is you know, looking at the daily sales reports we send them and logging in and checking all that, and, and they can notify the buyer that you know, maybe we should buy more of this uh, style. Um, and then we also uh, I talked about the tours we give. We're very open and uh, just want to share uh, what we do customer service wise and uh, company culture wise uh, to so the tour takes about an hour where we've had companies like Southwest Airlines come and uh, spend two sometimes three days and listen in on our calls for a few hours and talk to our recruiting team and uh, see what questions we ask or, or they want to uh, see, sit in on our training program and, and see how we do that and we're very open and, and that's just part of our uh, core value of being open and honest and then for ones that can't make it to our office, we also have a service, subscription service called Zappos Insights where uh, basically any entrepreneur can sign up for the service, ask questions, and we'll, if they're asking a recruiting question, we'll get someone from our recruiting department to answer it on video. And, uh, and, and we'll, we're, again, we're an open book. We'll share as much as possible. So step number four is about vision. Uh, and you know, we used to be just about shoes and uh, in the first two or three years of the company. But then when we decided that we wanted to be about something more meaningful, uh, the original motivation was actually, actually, let's just think about something so that we're not just like cornered into shoes and, and, and stuck with just shoes. And so we decided on customer service, but we originally the motivation was, okay, that's a bigger market, but kind of a funny thing happened that we didn't anticipate was that customer service was something that was you know, a bigger vision that had meaning that our employees got, could get really excited about. And we found that when employees saw that they were working for something beyond just profits or being the biggest you know, in a certain category, that it was something meaningful, that they were suddenly so much more engaged. And then, uh, and, and then when vendors came, they could sense the passion of our employees in, on this mission of being about the very best customer service. And then, when customers called, they could sense that the person on the other end of the phone truly, truly cared about them. wasn't just reading from the script, or wasn't just uh, you know doing a nine to five job. And so all of these things had a snowball effect. So when entrepreneurs ask me uh, what market they should go after, you know, my advice to them is uh, the last thing you see on the slide, which is chase the vision and not the money. And kind of the ironic thing is that the money will follow. So think about. Craigslist, where Craig is just passionate about the community, and now it's one of the top traffic sites. But he didn't set out trying to make, have Craigslist make a lot of money. I recently saw a movie uh, called Notorious, in which uh, Puff Daddy says to Biggie Smalls, also known as Notorious B.I.G., 
uh, don't chase the paper, chase the dream. I just wanted an excuse to put this slide in. <laughs> uh, so when I talk to entrepreneurs, you know, uh, ask them, you know, instead of thinking about market, what would you be passionate about doing for 10 years, even if you never made a dime? And, uh, you know, and that's what you should be doing. Or if, you're, if you have employees and uh, you, you're running a company, like, what is, what's the larger vision or greater purpose uh, that is not just about profits or money that you truly believe in and that you can, you're passionate enough about that you can get your employees to believe in? So there's a big difference between, you know, there's lots of uh, HR books and so on about how to motivate employees, but I think there's a big difference between motivation and inspiration. Uh, you can, uh, you know, you can accomplish stuff by motivating employees, but I think you can accomplish a lot more by inspiring them to some, a bigger vision that has meaning to them and that you're passionate about. And then uh, step number five is about building relationships. I personally, uh, hate the term, uh, hate networking events, uh, because usually it's about trying to trade business cards and find someone where uh, if they can benefit you somehow, then you know, maybe you guys can find out a way to trade services or something. Uh, what I prefer doing is actually just meeting interesting people. And, uh, and it's kind of weird, like, and it's not even from the business world, but what I found is that usually the timeline t seems to be two or three years later down the line, like that, just because you are interested in them as a person, that somehow ends up benefiting uh, either your company or, you know, for me, myself personally. And it's usually in ways that you can never anticipate. Like most of the big things that have gotten Zappos to where it is today are just completely random, lucky things that, you know, we could not have planned for, but because we built relationships like two or three years later, that it somehow panned out. And this, I don't know if it's a just, I don't know, there's something about the two to three year payoff. You know, because a lot of companies ask me, like, well, why don't most companies care about customer service? Because everyone knows customer service is important. Or why don't more companies care about culture? Because no one wants to work at a company with a bad culture. And I think the answer is because the payoff is usually two or three years down the line. You know, if our only goal was to maximize profit for 2009, the right thing to do would be to fire our entire call center. And I really don't think that would have an impact on our 2009 sales. But we'd start paying for it uh, two or three years later down the line. And then number six, uh, I was recently uh, at the inauguration and saw Al Gore speak, and I like this quote, if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And if I could do Zappos all over again, uh, I think what I would do differently is I'd hire more slowly and fire more quickly, because uh, it's always so tempting to just try to fill a seat with a, with a warm body. And then step, step number seven, I guess, isn't really a step so much as just a summary. Like, it's really just all about thinking for the long term. And you know, a lot of people uh, might, who hadn't heard of Zappos two years ago might think Zappos came out of nowhere. It's an overnight success. Uh, and we've actually been at it for almost 10 years. And it's not even that, those 10 years. You know, all of my previous experiences with Link Exchange, and then before that, there were many other businesses, not all of which uh, did well, like all of that is just part of the path of getting to uh, where you are. So just remember that no matter what you're experiencing now, you may not realize, it may, you may think it's a bad thing or it's a good thing, but it's really just all part of the path of getting you to eventually where you're going.